Hey there, Mr. Olson here. Uh, graph these. Systems inequalities, you should be familiar with them. Yep. So, pause the video. Okay, we're back. This first one here, 3x minus 5. Your line should look like that, except it should probably be solid, or dotted, shouldn't it? Negative 2x plus 5, also dotted. I'll well, come back and dot these in a second here. See, promise to live. I followed through on my promises. There we go, dotted. So, now we've got a uh, little greater than 3x minus 5, so you should be shading in. Wait, that's the wrong one. There we go. Um, this should be shading on this right here. And less than 2x minus 2x plus 5, you should have this here shaded. If you aren't sure how to shade it, this is not really the video to watch for that. Um, this is kind of delving into dig deeper systems of inequalities. Okay, 2x plus 4y is less than or equal to 8. And that's going to go through here. Bam. Shaded. It's going to be shaded this way. And then 3x plus 3y is less than or equal to 9, which looks like this. And now we should go the other way. Or the same way, actually, kind of. There we go. 3x minus 4y is greater than or equal to negative 12. So... I think about it more. This is the type of one that I mess up with more often. Okay, there we go. Three and four are intercepts. Something like this. And then three x minus two y is less than or equal to six. So that's three and negative two and negative three for our intercepts. And this one is shaded this way, while the other one is shaded the other way. So the combined area is just in the middle here. Yay. Oh, that's good. Great. Today's goal is to look at systems more than two inequalities. So I want you to add these inequalities here to your systems. Pause the video, do that. All right, we're back. So that first one there, x is greater than zero, that's gonna be a vertical line going really right on top of the y-axis. And it's greater than, which is gonna be to the right here. Now I just wanna talk about that a second. Uh, if it's just an x equals line, like a vertical line like that, greater than in the x direction is to the right, less than is to the left. Makes sense because the large numbers are to the right. One, two, three, four, larger than negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So it kinda makes sense to be shading to the right. As you get better at these, you might start to get a feel for when it's going to be one way or the other without having to check the point, which is nice. I love that when that happens, that you start to be so comfortable with the math. It's like, oh, so then this is the pattern, or oh, that pattern looks. So x greater than zero. So that's our final answer is uh, this right in here. This area right here. Oh, that's something I didn't talk about too often, but I should have. Whenever you have an intersection, those should be either be a solid point or an open point. This is an open point here, here, and here, because those are all strictly less than or strictly greater than. There's no equals on that. It's only when you have two equals that cross each other that you have a, you have a closed circle for your uh, intersection points. Okay, x is greater than or equal to zero. That's gonna be, just going this way. Notice we have some intersections in this problem too. All of them are with solid lines, so all of them are going to be solid circles for the intersections. There, there, so far, y is greater than or equal to zero. So we've got this y equals zero is our, is our x-axis. Greater than, it's going to be up. Up is the greater direction for y. Man, this is a mess here, isn't it? Super fun. And this little area in the middle, that is our solution. Yay. 
This last one here, y is greater than negative 3. So negative 3, that is, uh, y is greater than negative 3. That's going to be a horizontal line here. And then it shades upward from there. So it's this area between the other two lines and then above this line. That is our solution area. There we go. Okay, so that's multiple things like that. Let's look at, this here is a uh, story problem. Should be super fun. A company to use for you makes themselves two different television models, the HD Bayview and the Mega Telebox. And let me just say Mega Telebox, that's awesome. Let's highlight that. In fact, let's also highlight HD Bayview. Those are our two types of TVs, and I bet there are two variables. It's a classic setup for a problem that uh, you have in the first sentence, it tells you two things, and those are your two variables the rest of the time. The HD Big U takes two person hours to make. Person hours, that refers to amount of time for one person to do it. So two person hours, that'd be one person working for two hours. It could be two people working for one hour each. It could be four people working for a half hour each. Key thing is the number of people, and the amount of, time each, or the amount, the number of, uh, the amount of time added up among the different people equals uh, two hours. And the Megatel box takes three person hours to make. So again, that could be um, three people working one hour each, one person working three hours. Maybe one person works two hours, another person works one hour. Maybe you have uh, 30 people each working six minutes, I think, that adds up uh, to three hours. <laughs> Key thing is that it all adds up to three hours. TVs for You has 24 employees. It's not specific to one of our TVs, so 24 employees each working eight hours a day, uh, which is equivalent to one of 92 person hours a day. What's well, the most important information there? Think about it. Hopefully you came up with that person hours, since that matches up with the person hours here. TVs for you's total manufacturing capacity is 72 televisions per day. And this is my favorite part ever. TVs for you cannot make a negative number of televisions. It's actually a fairly classic uh, type of, um, it's a fairly classic limit that you can't have a negative amount. So HD Big View is going to be X, let's go with that, and Y is going to be Mega Telebox. So, system of inequalities. There's no negative numbers, that means that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. It could be equal to zero, we can make zero uh, HD big views, and y has to be greater than or equal to zero. We've got a limit on 72 televisions per day, so whatever amount of TVs we're making has to be less than 72. And we have a limit of 192 person hours per day. See if you can finish up these inequalities on your own. Okay, hopefully you came up with x plus y is less than or equal to 72. And hopefully you came up with uh, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 192. Graph the systems of equations. Nice thing is, because we have this all in the positives here, we can actually kind of ignore that x greater than 0 and y greater than 0. I would not bother graphing those because it will take up time and it will take up space and make it harder to see what's happening in our graphs. Okay, x plus y is, greater than seven, is less than or equal to 72. Uh, it could be equal to 72, so we need to have... We'll have our intercepts like this at the 72s. For the uh, 2x plus 3y, that gives you an x-intercept of uh, 96, y-intercept of 64. Draw in a graph going that way. And both those are less than, so we need to have it below the line. That ends up giving us, for our solution area, this area right here. Now, this gets really interesting, I need to interpret the bell any second here, dang it, is if we try to find out the maximum profit for this, it's going to be one of the corner spots on here. Each corner is potentially our maximum or minimum profit on this. If we look at that, that actually holds true. The corner at zero, zero, right here, when you're making zero TVs, you make zero money, so that makes sense that you get nothing. Uh, we've got that corner at zero, 064, they make 13,000, which is a lot more, but uh, still that's not the most. The most is actually this corner in the middle, where it's 24 of one, 48 of the other, for a total of uh, 14,000 and something. And then 72, 0 gives you 12,600. So, this is kind of called linear programming. You draw in all the lines, and you check out the corners to see which one has the maximum for whatever. Um, that's actually really good timing, because I need to go. And the lesson's over, so see you later. Bye.